So hi everyone, my name is Abdul Kalam and I'm the first year PhD student at Center for Quantum Engineering Research and Education, TCG Crest, Kolkata. So today I have the topic called Grover's algorithm. So this is one the second most well-known algorithm other than the Saur algorithm. So this is a quantum algorithm. It, it is obvious that it means it takes the advantages of quantum mechanical properties such as the entanglement, superposition, and the interference. So, so in this session, what we will discuss is the Grover fundamental ideas of Grover's algorithm, and we will try to implement it on the Qiskit website. Or uh, we will use some of the programmings of Grover's algorithm and verify its fidelity, what it is saying, and how it is using the quantum mechanical properties, and what are the basic idea about these things. So let's get started. So before jumping into that uh, Grover's algorithm part, we will gain some of the knowledge on quantum computer, how a com quantum computer works. So instead of the bits, quantum computer has quantum bits or qubits, which work really in a very crazy way. As we have seen in classical computers, we have either zero or we in ones. We have one. In zero, if it is had, it's zero, it's zero and it's tail, it's, it is one. So instead of zero or one, head or tail, a qubit can store a zero or one at a very same time. It means it can store any arbitrary states at the same time between zero and one. Now its probability should be added to one. So imaginary, imagine flipping a coin, a regular computer only recognizes a head or a tail. A quantum can, computer can recognize or deal with all the possible in, in between. So the computing power of a quantum computer is potentially limitless or at least much greater than the conventional classical computer that we are using. So what is the secret behind this? The secret behind is uh, some of the quantum mechanical properties such as superposition, entanglement and other than this the 2 to the power n concept that I have. So what is this 2 to the power n concept? Uh, so it means a qubit can store 2 to the power n number of states. So if, I have, if we have one qubit, it can store two states. If we have two qubits, then it can store, store four states in this way. So in very less amount of time or in very less amount of qubits, we can store a large or huge number of data we can store. Uh, but in classical computers, we can't do that same things. So what does it mean in the superposition state? So let's suppose it is in the, it is in the zero state. It means in the, let's take this one is the head. Uh, this one is the tail or let's take this one as the one state and this the zero state but if it is a classical computer this should be two spheres representing zero or one but when it is we are calling it a qubit it means the super it is in the superposition state we don't know whether this is <coughs> sorry we don't know whether this is zero or we, we don't know the, whether it is one it is anything between zero and one the probability should be added to one that is what the superposition means. That means it is anything, any possible values between zero and one. So it is it is giving a very brief, very large amount of possibilities to search anything in the Hilbert space. So there is a famous uh, experiment that we can verify how uh, about the superposition. So it's a story, not a very real experiment that, uh, or it is a mythological concept. So it is the Schrodinger's cat experiment. So what Schrodinger have uh, done, he, he have taken a cat inside a box and he have poison and there, there is a radioactive source that is uh, put inside the box. So there is all in the 50-50 chances. So if the radioactive uh, substance is active, it will break the glass and the poison will come out and the cat will die. So if Schrodinger is outside the box, he will not know whether the cat is dead or alive. So uh, from watching the box out, from outside, we will know we will we will think what we will think we think that either the cat is dead or the cat is alive so we don't know whether the actual actual cat is doing unless we open the box so before opening the box we will say that the cat is in the superposition state so another thing is the entanglement suppose we have zero and one we have two states or uh, two uh, suppose sir, let's take my example if my right hand and the left hand both are entangled, entangled and when the right is up, the left is automatically is going to down. When the left is uh, uh, going up, the right is automatically going to down. It means two particles when they are entangled, they behave 
behave their properties uh, as well. If it is up, then it will be down, and if it is down, it is up. So, so coming back to our Grover's algorithm, so it's it solves one thing very complicated. Com very much complicated problem that we are facing in our world that is unstructured database. So what is the unstructured database? It is a data that doesn't correspond to any data model or has no recognizable structures, making it very difficult for quantum programs to use. So the properties are data is unstructured and doesn't follow any data model, lacks any specific structure or order. Such, such as example is such, such as web pages, surveys, videos, memos, that video ad that I am making, it is a very unstructured data, data. It is not, we cannot make any model about it. So we cannot save it in any column or row or anything like that. So coming back to our old days, so let's suppose we have a phone diary and we are searching a number. Uh, someone has given me a number or we are uh, we are searching a word in the dictionary. Suppose any word such as water. We are searching the meaning of water in a dictionary. So how, how we will search that search that thing in the dictionary? So what we'll do? We'll see the first letter W. Then we will open the dictionary and go to the first letter of W. Then there is a water W A. Then we'll go again go to the uh, page where the W A words are starting. Then W T W A T words are starting. And then we will get the W A T or water things. So these are the three steps that we followed. First, we open the dictionary, then search the W. So instead of all the words, it the, the program, what the program did, instead of all the words, he just uh, take out the W letter words, then W A letter words, then W A T A letter words, then W A T A water letter words. So the word is one. So th there is a huge number of things that are going on. So, <clears throat> so how we can solve this and how we can search these things very easily and very less costly so the obviously these things are very costly we have to do cost means the number of operations that we are doing obviously so how we can reduce the things so this is the indian scientist uh, obviously we should know that dr love grover is an indian scientist that uh, and has contributed one of the most significant original results in the field of quantum computation and information processing the grover search algorithm that we are discussing so classical search of an unstructured database with n entry sticks order of n evaluation means we can up to go up to n number of times we have to search but grover shows that we can search it in root over of n number of times okay let's simplify these things suppose okay we will uh, there is slide some of the slides i have put in i think so we can understood this better then let us suppose if there is a cricket match going on and there is 10,000 spectators are spectators are there and one of them has carried a gun inside so you have the photograph of the man who has taken the gun inside but you don't know where the man is standing or where the man is, is sitting so you, our job is to find that man and catch that man so it is similar to the unstructured data it is the unstructured data with 10,000 spectators anywhere they will be and the, the gunman can be also anywhere sitting so this is unstructured data this we only have the data of the things okay that we have to search this man but where is he we don't know so let's do it in a classical way so what classical way how we can do it so in classically we will check each person at a time each person at a time so in a worst case scenario suppose we are facing the worst case scenario so we have to check all all the 10,000 men and at the 10,000 number of times we will find that this is the gunman okay so on an average it will take n by two attempts or maybe and or maybe we can need n times means if the gunman is at the 10,000th the person the person that we are searching is at the 10,000th number then we have to find it in 10,000 times so which is very costlier so but but in in Grover search using this Grover search algorithm, we can you can find that man in 10,000 root over of 10,000 time root over of 10,000. So the complexity has decreased. So in classical computing, the complexity is of order of n, but in quantum computing, the complexity goes down to root over of n. In a very simpler manner, if you are again we are suppose we have four four things that I have to search. So we will go. I, there is a four person Ram Gopal Syam. So I have to search this man. So maybe I have to search this man first, this man first, this man first. And the, at the last moment, I will got that. Means I have to take four operations. 
but in quantum computing you have you have we have we can find that thing in root over of four that is in two attempts only two attempts if classical computing taking four attempts you are taking only two attempts if classical computing is taking 100 attempts in quantum computing you can find it using only 10 attempts so this is very very less costly than this classical computing so uh, coming back to our previous example this 10,000 spectra tests are, are there so we can find that then in only 100 attempts but in classical computing we have we have to we may have to search around 10,000 times so with the help of the amplitude amplification trick provided by the Grover's algorithm a quadratic speed up saves substantial amount of time as well as the list grows larger and larger all right so now let's move on to how Grover algorithm works so let's understood these things the process we will let's understood this process by some simple examples suppose we have a group of men here and the announcer is announcing that you are the new prime minister of india if your name ends with modi but we don't know whose name is ending with modi okay again this is the unstructured thing no, we, we don't know the order or where the man is standing or where is he so so let's apply the grover's algorithm trick or before we applying the grover's algorithm thing let's first see how a classical computer will face this approach so so we have uh, the the prime minister list and we, these are the end the end names or the names of the things the name of the men that are standing so whose whoever name is Modi comes he is a prime minister we have to find in very less 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 attempts so what we can do to find the, the names we will define an oracle so it is the oracle is a black box we don't know what is going inside the things we can see it is a loop so uh, uh, when a program goes into a uh, oracle when it comes out is the result we don't know what's what inside the oracle is performing but whenever the result is coming out we know that okay he is he, he is the he is the prime minister and we find him in uh, four attempt or five attempt or six attempt or ten attempts so let's suppose we have ten attempts we have taken ten index we have taken and if the winner a winner is modi if the input find it uh, find the find the index number true then it will get the true answer and it is if it doesn't find then he will go to the next index and find us find the name modi if he, he find it he didn't find it he next go to the other another index so let's see how many times it we have to take so uh, when we uh, enter the loop what we find that winner found at index 9 let's see uh, so the winner is at the index index 9 so 10 calls needed to uh, the oracle used okay we in the previous side we we see that the the modi name was at the ninth place or the tenth place so index is nine so we have to take as in programming the index starts from zero it means we have to take 10 calls to um, get the name out of it so maybe we find it in the first if modi was at the first first position we will get that okay at the first attempt we get out the name but in the worst case scenario if the name was at the last position we have to apply the oracle 10 times to reach that word okay so let's now make how what the thing what are the things that Grover, uh, that makes Grover algorithm so special three things one the superposition phase inversion and amplitude amplification we will under we will not go to the very the mathematical thing because we have very less times so we will only see what are the fundamental things that these things are showing so the amplitude amplification is a process procedure that increases the probability amplitude of the value to be searched and decrease the rest of the probability amplitude so what does it mean means it amplify the state that we are searching so let's see so let's uh, let we have four states that we are applying now the uh, search algorithm we are taking four step four states sorry 00 01 10 and 11 and our criminal is one one state so we have to find out the one one state so for this we will define the oracle that the black box that i have mentioned prior okay so in the black box if it is our solution that if it is our one one that the state is one one then it will be minus the answer will be minus one one coming out of the oracle it will be minus one one means if it is if it is up when when it is going to the oracle it is up 
but when when it is coming out of the oracle it will be minus 1 1 when it means down so if it is coming inside the oracle is 1 1 going outside as minus 1 1 so let's see that is the, that is the thing if w is the winner if we we, we are finding the winner then it is will be the one and the rest of the things will be zero so we will pass each element inside the oracle and we are if we are searching the winner then for the only for only winner the in the the the, the state will be inversed flipped and other things it will pass away okay so it is if it is one one then come if going inside the oracle it is one one coming out out, out of the oracle it is minus one one but it is if it is zero going inside the oracle is zero zero going outside the oracle is also zero zero, zero, zero. It, is, it doesn't inverse so for these things we have uh, we will use some of the quantum gates like the hardmark gate the jet gate control jet gate and c not gate these are the poly gate uh, poly poly gates that we use in our um, quantum computation that is these this x gate y gate z gate and this had a gate these are the single qubit gates and these are the two qubit gates or multi qubit gate that we we generally follow so these are the matrix representation of the gates so first is this Hadamard gate so Hadamard gate in a very brief point of view the Hadamard gate gives a superposition thing and so it turns turns the states into a turns a qubit into a superposition state maybe it is in 0 0 or one of 50 50 chances of getting 0 and 50 50 chances of getting 1 so this is this is the matrix representation of Hadamard so when we apply this on 0 we will get this state and when we apply this in a one state we just a matrix multiplication we will get this state so this is 0 minus 1 1 by 2 0 minus 1 state similarly this is the z gate 1 0 0 minus 1 when the input is 0 it is output is 1 when the input is 1 it is minus 1 so apply this matrix into the 0 state or 1 state you will get the respective value this is just the matrix multiplication 1 0 1 0 and G we, we know the 0 state is what 1 0 and one state is 0 1 so when we apply this uh, z gate to the 0 state z gate is this one 0 state is this one multiply this 1 into 1 plus 0 into 0 0 into 1 and it's minus 1 into 0 so we will get the output as 0 state but when we are applying this z gate to the 1 state we are getting this minus 1 okay this is similar to the c0 gate okay the c0 gate this is the multi qubit gate so we have two states first first state we call this as a control and second one is the target so zero is the control and one is the target one is the control zero is the target one is the control one is the target so whenever whenever the control is one the target will flip its sign so it will become zero here the control is one uh, targeted zero it will becomes one and one the flip uh, flip the target uh, sign of the target another is the control z so what control z does control z changes the one one state to minus one one state reflect we are uh, remember we are searching this one one state when, when i was defining the problem of this um, grover's algorithm i mentioned that we are finding one one state we have to find one one state so three three steps are there and among them one is the phase inversion so we have to get one one to minus one one so this is the gate so control z Control Z turns 1 1 into minus 1 1. So control Z we are we need this state. Okay, so three states uh, as I have mentioned. First one the uh, put all the qubits to superposition state. Okay, so we will put first all the qubits pass, we will pass all the qubits through the Hadamard gate and put it in the superposition state. Then we will construct an oracle with the black box that where all the states will go into in. Okay, and the uh, the, the object will be searched. And we and coming out of the oracle, we will get the answer. And inside the oracle, there are two or through through three things that we have to um, we keep in mind. So this is the oracle. Here the oracle starts. Okay, before this the initialization, we are putting all the things into superposition state. Hadamard turns everything into superposition state. So this is the superposition state, and here the oracle starts. So inside the oracle, what are the things? There is a reflection operator and there is a diffusion operator. This is the unitary matrix. Everything is a unitary operator. So this is the reflection operator and this is the diffusion operator. So diffusion, we call it as a diffuser. So we will we will see how these things works. Okay. So suppose we are passing the zero state. 
okay when there is a slice here it means this is a n number of qubits are there so we are passing all the qubits into all the uh, all the all the head mark gates that have placed and then we pass it through the oracle and there is the diffuser we will see how this oracle and the diffuser works so uh, let's suppose this this is our winner state this is the one one state that we that we are going to find and this s is the superposition state okay and then x state is the state without the winner state with, without the one one so what we will do so so this if the winner state is here it means it is not here so these are in the orthogonal states these both are the orthogonal state and s is the superposition state so we will project this into the x state so we will project this into the x state this is the reflection and then what we will call we will the amplitude amplification then the diffuser does the amplitude amplification and it is getting closer to the winner state in the first iteration it, it has come to this this place when the second uh, when the second second iteration it will go to the first go to this place and that gets the amplitude amplification this will get to this state at this position and when again it will go to this again go down and then again go up and up to get to the winner state so let's see the Grover's approach so if you you find it you find the cursor moving as very difficult let's understood by using this example so again remember the thing that i have mentioned earlier the dream start ends with modi okay so what uh, we will we will put all the thing all the men in the superposition state first so we are passed all the men into the hydromart gate and they are all in superposition now then phase inversion the winner should the winner will be inverted one one is minus one one so the one one is coming to minus one one then another thing was that i was calling the diffuser diffuser what the diffuser does amplitude amplification so now the amplitude amplification is done so we clearly see the okay here is the winner so among all the possible things we are now clearly seeing that this is the winner because his amplitude is larger than other things the other man the amplitude is larger than the other man's so this is the complete circuit complete circuit of grover cell garden the, the first one is the hydromart which put all into superposition state is initialization and this is the diffuser this is the oracle that that is going around and this is the reflection first if it is in right in this moment in this type we can try it. okay if it is in the this type so this is the estate this is the estate will go down first and then okay maybe this type hmm. first this is the estate this will go down first and then amplitude of amplification so we have to take this this s state up to this winner state okay so let's do the programming now so these are the these are the tools that we have to get from qiskit first so without these packages we can't do the do this global algorithm calculations so these are the Qiskit visualization for visualization purposes the numpy for mathematical things matplotlib for plotting this is the uh, ibm q providers which provides the simulator or, or the original backends that we need okay so okay this is the job monitor and so second first thing we do initialize the state initialize the state and apply the oracle to one one so if we want to construct the control z operation what we are doing in inside the oracle we will make the quantum circuit 2 quantum circuit 2 means two qubits are there we call this as an oracle so inside the oracle we will uh, create the control z which has control at 0 and target at 1 okay we, if you draw this is the circuit so we will match the circuit that we have seen complete full circuit we will draw the complete full circuit then in the initial process what we are going we are applying the head mod to all the circuits so the control circuit 2 2 means 2 qubits we have taken and head mod is on 0 and 1 as well so here is the head mod 0 and here is the head mod 1 and then there is the oracle that we have drawn this one the oracle that we have drawn then applying the diffuser function inside the diffuser function remember that uh, reflection and then amplitude modification these things the, these things has been done here so these are the things for, for the grover circuit there is a way we are constructed to crest or 2 2 means two quantum register and two classical registers so quantum register we put the qubits through quantum registers and we measure we measure the values of quantum uh, so the, sorry, the qubits through the classical registers so we do we both know, know need two qubits as well as the two um, classical registers 
So global circuit, we are considering the global circuit 0 and 1. So head mat at 0 and 1. Then we are applying the oracle, this is the oracle, and then the reflection thing, reflection operator, this 0, 1, and we measure, at last we measure these things. So what is the outcome that, okay, before, so where we will run this circuit, we will run the circuit in AER simulator. This is a simulator that IBM provides for the quantum computation programming and all that we need okay so when we visualize the things we we, we okay let's get that piece. okay so the result is one one see see we have find out that criminal that is one one state we were searching the first we were searching the what one one state so what one one stages have gone through first one one go to minus one one and then amplitude multiplication so one one be, gets to bigger that the movie picture that i have shown that it is first go to minus one one the amplitude multiplication will go up. So we can see clearly see that the four states h2 qubits we have taken, four states are there. So we can see the probability of the counts of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 are very less, but 1, 1 it is very high. It means we have cast the criminal that is 1, 1. So in this way, so in this way we can find uh, any unstructured inside any in structure uh, sorry on structured database we can find any num any part or any number um, very easily using the grover cell algorithm in very less amount of time because it has a complexity of root over a pen so here we have find uh, found out that calculation in just one sort four states were there in classical computing in the worst case scenario it has up to go on to up to four states but in classical in quantum computing we have find it in just one step so this is very and this is one of a very fantastic algorithm and led the foundation of quantum computation that that is going around now so these are the references that if you want to learn about the things so this first first references in reference is very nice you can go through and there is also this nielsen chuan book is also very nice for this explanation of global algorithm and this one the first quantum mechanical algorithm for database search 1996 was the original uh, pay for for this uh, global cell quality okay so this is that's all for now so thank you